Woohoo! Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so we are live on the uh, Guilt Free Eater Facebook page, and I'm super excited to bring Joanna. Joanna's a past client of mine. Um, we worked together three years, two years ago, three years ago. Three, when was it? Three, three plus years ago. Okay, <laughs> like it's hard to remember now. Um, yeah. But we worked together a few years ago and I wanted to bring Joanna on because one of the main things we know about weight loss programs is that you lose weight in the interim and then it all comes back and more. And so I always tell people that the work that we do is lifelong and I mean it. So I wanted Joanna to come on years after our work together to talk about what she's been doing. But first we're going to go back to when we first met, which a few years ago and kind of tell people where you were when, uh, before we started the program. I definitely was, um, had serious eating issues relate my relationship to food and eating was complicated. It was like food was an obsession and, um, something that unfortunately I kind of like lived for it on a certain level. Like I even remember discussing with a friend who definitely was brought up in like an eating disorder situation. She'd be like, when I see people getting their food at the restaurant, and we finish, she goes, I get jealous of them because they get to eat something. <laughs> so yeah, totally. I kind of related to that at that time. I really did. I was like, yeah, like they're going to have this whole new food adventure. And so I think I would call myself a foodie, which used to have a derogatory thing to it. And I think up until just literally the other day, the term foodie means like just someone who's knowledgeable and passionate about food. Maybe like I used to define it as obsessed, but that definitely is not applicable anymore. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I couldn't, I, I was trying to remember because, you know, I, I'm really not one to talk about the scale or size, but I couldn't remember where we started when we, do you remember where you were when we first started weight wise or size wise? I was very obsessed with the scale. It was like, I thought for a couple of years that I had a scale, the battery died and I, I blamed my ballooning on the scale like oh I didn't have a scale to keep me in check and maybe yeah. at the time that was true maybe there was a weird like I answered to the scale right I'm not going to deny that there may have been some of that going on but um I was definitely like size 12 size 14 chunky I mean the numbers were high I know now that I'm a size four sometimes a size six sometimes a size four I'll fluctuate just like within maybe like five, six, seven pounds. I mean, it used to be, I fluctuated in like 20 pound ranges, you know, yeah, 15, yeah. 20 pounds. Now it's like, you know, COVID, what have you, I'm not working out in the gym. I might fluctuate a little bit, but it's, it's like, I'm happy to be a size four. It's fun to go into a store and buy like extra small. And it's not like vanity sizing. It's like, it's always extra small or it's always small. And it's, I, it shouldn't like be excited about that, but I still, it's like, now it's the point where it's, that's rewarding. Yeah. It doesn't mean what it once did, but it's still kind of like, still kind of like I look at, I catch myself in the mirror. I'm like, who's that person? Like, who's that? I still do that. And I've, I've had friends that have lost far more weight than I have. And they're like, I, I totally still am shocked that I'm like, whoa, who's that person? It's so, it's a wild, but exciting, humbling thing. Cause really what I did is like, because of your program, I ended, I ended the battle with the emotional eating and the up and down and the obsessions and the, like, I hated exercise, you know, it was a punishment exercise was, I was the girl at times when I was at my skinniest, 120 pounds, like after college. And I would be at the gym, like on the treadmill for two and a half hours. Yep. And it was a miserable existence. That was really hard to sustain that and eating not much. And then I've tried every single diet I've done every single program hypnosis, just everything. And it just never really, until you, it really, like, you're just, like I said to you earlier, that like you're like my guardian of the universe who really helped finally disappear this plague. And I'm grateful that I'm now in, you know, able to have the freedom in my life that I never had before. I just, I think a lot of women who have struggled with weight, feel hopeless. I know I did. I felt like I've tried everything. How's this going to work for me? Can't be that easy. Cause I ate, you know, pizza and frozen snicker bars getting to this weight. You know, people are always shocked about that. There's no BS about that. Like I, <laughs> I, eat what I, want and I still eat what I want. 
it's just interesting how your palate changes and just so many amazing changes because of you. I just thought um, it was this uphill battle and I was never going to triumph over that mountain. And I finally reached the summit and it's like, it's been years now and I am so grateful in lockdown. I think my weight's only fluctuated in that six to eight pound range because of lockdown. And sometimes, you know, if there is more stress and cortisol, there is maybe a little more emotional eating, but at least I'm always aware of it. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm doing yeah. that thing. And that's more than half the battle. Yeah. And I just wanted to say that I think part of that excitement when we reach the size and when you said it's different now, I think at least for me, what was different about it, I wasn't excited because I was a size four. I was excited because I actually ended the battle. Like I felt like I finally am off the crazy roller coaster and I knew it internally, like I was done. Yeah. I think there's a, I think that knowledge is there the vast majority of time. There's moments where still like I have a longer momentum. I'm in my forties. Um, so I have a longer history of battling this battle. So I'm like, we're talking more like 20 years maybe. And so there is sometimes moments that I'm like, oh, I really hope I don't ever do that. But I'm like, no, 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 no. You know too much. This is like, you know, if you've had a drink, you don't get in a car, you call an Uber. It's no different. It's like, yeah. if you're someone that like really is on the path to well-being and mindfulness and growth, you just know that these were really, this is just part of the path and that you can actually graduate and release yourself. So most of the time I feel like I'm never going back, but sometimes because I had such so many failures, but again, they were through dieting. This is not dieting. Yeah. So that, but most 99% of the time I'm pretty, pretty clear about it, but it's okay. And when those feelings come of like, you know, anxiety about that, I just remind myself, like, I, I can't even overeat and enjoy it now. Like I, exactly. used to, I, I still can't even believe like how much food I would eat. Cause my friend once said, it takes a lot of effort to be at your weight. <laughs> She goes, you have to eat a lot to get to your weight. And I said, yeah, yeah, I did. And now it's not, I never am deprived and I eat high fat foods all the time and whatever I want, really. Yeah, exactly. It sounds crazy, I know, but. I know it sounds crazy when I say it too. So I need more people to say it. So they're like, oh, maybe it is true. <laughs> so, yeah. And I know that I was in my twenties when I went through the process and my clients are never in their twenties. It's always forties, fifties, and sixties. And so it's nice to hear it from other people, not just me. That's, that's, yeah. We had a parallel experience as what my clients are having. And so it's really important to hear that. And we talked a little bit about, can you tell um, everyone listening where your um, blood panels were when you first started? Yeah. So I have a very healthy fit boyfriend and we have, you know, it's sometimes it's, I, you know, I watched that and I knew I could never be extreme like that. You know, he eats so clean. I can't do that. I got to have what I want. You know, I'm not, he did it because his, he does it because his father died young. So he's motivated by fear of death, <laughs> you know, never yeah. a good place to be. A bit extreme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I had gone in and my doctor was like, you're, you're practically diabetic. Your blood sugar is out of control. My lipids, my cholesterol, like every test that, and it, it was a really expensive blood panel. I still am like paying it off with the, my insurance didn't even fully cover it. How many labs we did. And I was like, I looked horrible on paper. And then about two years later, the doctor's like, I can't believe this is Joanna. I can't believe this is the same human being. Like she goes, you have stellar blood sugar, this, that, everything has been like reverse. She goes, you're like that before and after picture, you know? And I was so like amazing. in more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. definitely. <laughs> if only you could see what was happening internally. Uh, yeah. Much calmer in here, isn't it? <laughs> much calmer. There was so much inflammation too. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, and I was going to say about the other thing about um, having moments when you feel a little bit of doubt or fear, that's normal. And one of the things I keep telling my people during the program, after the program is we never want to be in any extreme, even the extremes that you might think are good. Like if you never had a fear, never had a doubt, that would be living in an extreme once again. Um, so it's just normal, like a balanced gray area kind of living is you go from you it's there's polarity, I guess, is my point. Polarity exists. Um, and it doesn't, it's, it's about, does it spiral you? How long does it last? Is it a trigger? And that's really what we see as a, a big change. See, that's like, you're not even like, you could take what you just said and apply it to like 
you know, how one feels in the job market. Like that's one of the things too that I noticed her program helped me with relationship. And you know, I was struggling with an addiction. I had a marijuana addiction and like definitely was a big problem, you know, and it made me very like unfocused and really any food is an addiction. Shopping was an addiction. So I've noticed like dismantling the addiction mindset and like the things that you brought to me extended on many, many levels of my life. So it was like, it, what you just said is just priceless because it's a, it's sometimes hard to live in the gray. It's sometimes hard to not have the certainty we all want, but I think if we can embrace that life is uncertain and that's okay, then, you know, like you, you learn to soothe yourself and food used to be a soother for me. It used to give me like a temporary relief. Yeah. And then it was like, it only compounded the problem. Marijuana gave me a temporary relief. And then I had to return to my life and be like, oh my God, I just ate like a so much food. I still was struggling with food before the marijuana. It was, right. it's been a lifelong thing, really. Um, the weight really started 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an important thing to like the, um, psychology that you teach in your program is priceless on, on all levels. I just feel like probably you don't talk about that much, but especially now as the world feels so like you go out to the supermarket and you feel like you're, you know, in a reality movie half the time. Right. So I think your, your program is like, especially grounding now. And that's why I was like, can I re listen to some stuff? Cause I still find your, some of your, those videos were like groundbreaking for me. They really like tied it with a bow and was like, let, let that like, you know, I was able to kind of handle things that I couldn't handle before. And so that's why I wanted to revisit your program, which I know we have access to that for a life, you know, at least I, I did. So that really has helped too to kind of remind myself. Good. Uh, I mean, that's why the videos are there. That's exactly why. That's why you have lifetime access is so that you can revisit them. You'll hear things differently as you go along your journey. Um, and they're very valuable to, to just keep revisiting. And I always yeah. tell people too, like, cause not everybody can afford to work with me privately. And I always tell them like the video, like the curriculum is the same for whether you do it with me or do it by yourself. Like if you do it, it's, it works just the same, right? Like, you know, of course it's always beneficial to have somebody to hold your hand through the process. And there's a lot of value I can bring to someone who has longer term issues to work through some of that, but like the foundation is all there, right? It just just gotta it's just watch up to it you to do it, it. Um, yeah. you know, whether you complete it or not and, and just go with the journey, because if it's been a couple years journey or a long journey, you just kind of keep getting there and it gets so much easier. And the self-worth that you build in the work that we do with you or through the program is invaluable. It's just, you can't measure that because that, that takes you on, like I said earlier, it kind of takes you in the path of life, where you want to go, who you want to become, who you want to live into, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Now I wanted to touch into one of the things we were talking about before, which is, so I always tell people when you complete the program, mainly what we do in at least the first 30 days, especially is try to move you out of irrational places around food to a rational place around food. I remember talking to someone and she's like, I don't get it. Like my husband will open the fridge and there'll be like healthy chicken, you know, healthy salad. And he reaches for the unhealthiest thing, even though he feels horrible and I don't get it. And I'm like, that's because you're in a rational place about food. He's not like, he can't make sound, logical, rational decisions because he's not there yet. And so that's where we have to get to. And then once you're there, you can make logical decisions, which sometimes are the salad and sometimes it's the snicker bar and it doesn't matter because there's no emotion around it. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that some people can do, I tell them is if you want, after the program, you can go try out some of the more like traditional types of eating plans or exercise routines. I know we talked about with you an exercise routine during our work together. Um, and the cool thing is you didn't get here through any traditional program. So you always have that. You could always say, I'm never going to do any traditional meal plan, exercise routine, anything ever again, which is how I personally live. And a lot of my clients live, but, and you also know that if you wanted to try one, you can, and you won't be the same. It won't be from that same desperate place. So Joanna mentioned to me that she's been trying the intermittent fasting. And I just wanted her to touch on how that's such a different experience for her and where it's coming from. Well, part of what I got out of many things in your program was that don't ever do something just to lose weight. Cause that was always like, 
you know, the holiest of holies of goals. Like you really wanted to, you know, it was always about how much weight can I lose? How quickly can I lose it? Can I keep it off? Some new promise. And so for me, um, I thought, well, this isn't an eating plan. Intermittent fasting is an eating pattern. And I think I lack structure in my life at times. I'm kind of, um, I like that sort of structure since I don't have a lot of it. I don't have a kid to run after or anything like that. I find that I'm floundering a lot of the time. I'm very lucky to be able to do that on the one hand, but I'm a good time waster. And so for me, I thought this gives me a sense of structure. When I was working before the quarantine, um, I remember, you know, I would do this intermittent fasting because of all the reasons other than weight loss. I, I mean, the weight loss was exciting. I knew it was like free fat burning, but I knew that wouldn't sustain me. Like it had to be like for cardiovascular health, for blood sugar health, for this health, for like, if you look at the benefits of it, they are dramatic. But before I worked with you, I know I wouldn't have been able to sustain it because it would have been punitive. It would have been like, what's this new thing? I have to starve now. Cause you know, you yeah. think fasting <laughs> and you think starving. Right. Most of the time you're sleeping through the, the, the fast, you know? So you like, you know, you stop eating at 7 p.m. And then, you know, I'm not going to go plow a field at 10 p.m. So I really don't need those nutrients, right? So it's like you sleep through the night and then you eat breakfast at 11. And I eventually, I sometimes play with those hours. Sometimes I finish dinner at five and, and it's not so stringent. I'm not nuts about it. I do it frequently for all the amazing, there's a lot of vanity there too, because it does give you like, it simulates certain hormones that like make you look youthful and glowy. It just does all these things. So before that, I wouldn't, ha I would have been too um, obsessed with food and too like neurotic about food and too like, no, but I need my first thing with coffee in the morning. And I, I would have been like, it would have run me and I would have found a reason not to, to have it work out. But I know in part losing the weight and the intermittent fasting together did make those blood panels stellar. It's a hundred percent. The doctor's like, oh, you decided to do that. She goes, I, I've seen huge success with my clients with really not even just weight, but like the blood sugar, all that stuff, you know, heart, the cardiovascular issue, you know? So that was a big motivator for me and yeah. for a change because it was refreshing not to be, have it just to be about weight loss. I and mean, that just gets, you get so obsessed with the weight loss that you're unable to focus on other things. And right. then you get in your own way about it. Yeah. I love it. And I mean, I, I mean, I could never do it. It sounds awful to me, but that we're not the same, right? Not all people. Yeah. I think it's so important. You mentioned this idea that you like structure and Janine Roth talks about permitters and restrictors and, and, and that it's a spectrum, right? So you're not like yeah. fully permitter or fully restrictor. Usually you have kind of a blend, but I am like fully a permitter. Like you give me one rule and I'm like, F that. Right. So like, I am like fully on like the hard permitter side, but there's a lot of people on the restrictor side that like that kind of structure. And so they actually do want to be able to live within the bounds of some structure or rules, even though it makes me like want to scream, <laughs> like the people do want that. And I tell people who have that me like mentality, like you, if that's truly the way you're meant to live, then it will be easy to live within those rules that you choose. It won't be difficult. It'll be very effortless for you if that's really where you're meant to live. And one of the questions I posed to you was, you know, if since you have selected intermittent fasting, you know, as long as you don't wake up and you're like, I'm starving, well, too bad because we're on this thing. Like, yeah. and that's the difference, right? Right, right. And I think it was like, I also realize um, for me, it was this sense of freedom. Cause like, you know, it's like, oh, I get to think about, like, I like to think about other things besides food now. Like that's yeah. exciting, you know, <laughs> what like a concept. Oh, <laughs> what a concept to be obsessed with other things and to have other things that nurture me, fulfill me, fill me up besides food. So because I eat within this eight hour window from like 11 AM to 7 PM or whatever it is, I'm not even that strict about it because it's none of it really matters. Um, it's really how you choose what works for you or it's not for you. That's okay too. But it's like this freedom of not having to think about it. Like, Oh, remember, don't forget to eat between, you know, this tower. So there's a freedom in it. It doesn't feel restrictive. And like I said, I think also a, like, a lot of people, especially who have hung, who have like a hang up around eating or food, don't eat enough. And so right. you're constantly snacking throughout the day. And then I've learned to like 
eat my snack kind of along with my breakfast. Right. And I love to eat big breakfast because now I'm full and say like satisfied instead of like, what do I eat? I didn't eat enough. Like, do you remember being at a party? I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but you go to a party and you like refill, like you put a tiny amount of guacamole and a tiny amount of chips on your plate. And then you find that you've gone back like 10 times. Like right. I used to be in a lot of denial. I used to do that a lot, like fill up slowly. And then I lost count. And my friend once said, why don't you just put the amount you want to eat on your plate? And I think I was embarrassed because I made wanted to eat the whole buffet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I kind of have adopted that. I'm okay. Cause I'm not, I don't have neurotic distressed eating issues anymore so it's like I'll, I'll bring my snack to my breakfast and eat a lot more it's fun you know I don't count calories I don't look at that and I'm like I'm fine with eating carbohydrates but I'd rather eat them what I've noticed on a hormonal level if I eat like oatmeal or toast or bread in the morning that insulin spike makes me more sleepy and when do I want to be sleepy at night right so this was really counterintuitive but like I'll eat pasta at nighttime. And now I used to think, well, if I eat it in the morning, I'm going to burn it off all day. But no, <laughs> I think I remember an triggered. email thread like this. <laughs> like, can I have carbs yes, at night? Yeah. Can I, I remember you asking me, can I eat after six? Um, there's so many rules we had to reverse, right? Like if you're oh, hungry. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the reasons I liked having, um, you know, more of a one-on-one because there was, I knew I would have like a feast pun intended of like questions <laughs> after questions that I was like, I need to be able to bounce these ideas off you. Yeah. Yeah. And it worked really well. Cause every time yeah. you're like, okay, you're right. I need to hear that. <laughs> like, yes, no, yes yeah. you can eat that. Yes. You can do that. <laughs> yeah. It was always it was a bunch of permission. Um, and then some structure as to why, right. I think it's important. Like giving permission is, is good. And then also providing reasons as to why that that will still be productive for you is really helpful. I remember feeling at one point going like, I'm in the market and I don't know what to eat. That was a really interesting thing yep. because I had to like shake off all these, well, no, no, no. It's like shocking. We can't, we, that we can find anything left to eat on this planet. Right. It's like exactly. shocking because it's like, <laughs> don't have this and don't have that and don't touch this. And this is processed. And it's like, I, I, I was so growing up in LA, I think I was like, especially inundated with weird messages and programs and every diet you've heard of. So I think it was like fun to kind of discover what, like I, I get to eat what I want. And I, and I was lamenting with you earlier that I sometimes miss like Oreos cause they don't taste the same to me now. <laughs> and that's kind of like, I kind of laughed to myself. I'm like, well, if I'm going to go eat some cookies, I'm going to go to this shop that specializes yes. Cookies. I say that and all I'm the gonna, time. Yeah. Cookie like, I'm over it. here. <laughs> Absolutely. That's I what won't, I want. I won't like, I guess I, one of the things I learned was like, you only have so much appetite, right? So I'm not wasting any of that appetite on something that's not absolutely delicious. Right. <laughs> and an Oreo is not worth it to me. I'd rather have yeah. a fresh baked cookie. I'm going to go yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, you may have said it, Janine Roth may have said it. Um, if I think you said definitely a version of like, if you're not loving the food you're eating, you're not eating correctly. And I've never forgotten that. It's like, so the right, I was like, this woman is a woman <laughs> after my heart, you know, like she's got it. Yep. You know, that's, that's, it's, food is meant to be enjoyed. And that's counter from what a lot of messages that we hear, but um yeah. That is how truly how I live. I live to to really enjoy food and I get satiated from it and I get pleasure from it and I get full from it and I move on with my day. Yeah. I think I, the hardest part in for me in your program was like the exercise thing. Cause I, like I told you earlier, like we said, it was, just, I really, you said the only things in life that don't move are dead. And it took me a lot of reframing to figure out how I want to like, to be called to something. And I remember, and this is embarrassing. I never told you this in follow-ups, but I did join this like gym that promised a lot of weight loss quickly. <laughs> and I felt like pressure within the relationship to do it. And so I was like, I'm going to do this. What the hell? And I did shed down a lot of weight, but I was miserable. And I'm like, Michelle would be shaking her head right now. <laughs> I think I'm glad I learned that I can push like 50 pounds on a, like a trolley across the room, but like, sure. I hate this life. And I was so upset for subjecting myself to something for somebody else. It was just an old way of being. It was like the old ego was knocking. Yeah. And I kind of opened the door just to remind myself, like, 
after I stopped working out, I shredded down even thinner without working out. Yeah. And I liked that I could do that without absolutely hating my life. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a concept there too. Yeah. Um, like the exercise yeah. is, can be a tough one. I know I have people kind of in two camps, either that are like, I don't exercise. I hate the exercise. And I know I probably should be and the people who are using it uh, like almost like an exercise bulimia type of relationship where it's the thing I do to burn the calories. Um, and I know I was the latter, uh, and it was very difficult to form a relationship with exercise that I actually wanted for me. It happened because I got injured and I couldn't move. And I was like, Oh, I actually do like to move. Interesting. <laughs> now that it's been taken away, I forgot that I actually would choose to move over not move. Um, it's that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Yeah, totally. And you yeah. know, it's not going to be enjoyable if you're forcing it. Uh, and so when it's removed and then you get to, and then you can't choose it is when you're like, oh, I actually would choose it though. And I didn't know that I would. Yeah. But that took a long time. And I really can say like, it's a, it's like, I've found my rhythm. I found the things that I enjoy. I took a dance class, like dancing to musicals. I think you inspired that, <laughs> nice. and, yeah, you know, and it took me a while, but I, I don't, um, you can really lose weight eating what you want and not exercising. I'm like, I was always amazed to have like spaghetti and meatballs at lunch and whatever I wanted for dinner and still to lose weight. It's just like, what is going on here? It was yeah. wild. It was wild for me too. I couldn't believe it either. And, and I was like, had no prior like evidence. I was just like, well, we're just trying this. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was fun. I couldn't believe it worked. It was definitely one of those moments where I'm like, why doesn't everybody know this? I don't understand. I think society is out to, you know, like the way you get blocked on Facebook ads or whatever, because everyone's selling a magic potion. Yep. That's just another way to deceive the consumer. It's Absolutely. not like it's not authentic and it's not real and it's not sustainable. No, it's not meant to be. I always say those diets and everything, they work really well for like celebrities for a movie, you know, because like, think about it. If, if it's, if someone's like, I'm going to pay you millions of dollars, you just have to get super cut for like six months. And then you do whatever you want after that. Like I'm in, right. Yeah. I'll do the absolutely. diet. Sure. <laughs> like I'll follow I'll the plan. Price. Yeah. But you know, it's temporary. So it's not hard to follow it because you're not in your head going, oh my goodness, I have to do this for the rest of my life. If I want to maintain this figure, you're like, you're looking at a, a short-term goal. So a vacation, a wedding, a movie, a, a boxing match, a bodybuilding show, like that's what it's for. It's never meant to be sustained. No, no. And I think I struggled giving up the scale for quite a long time with you. Yeah. I still have it stashed away in case like, God forbid, I have that urge. But um, what I do now is I use like tight jeans and I know like you can now I'm not in denial when I look at my body. I think the amount of weight that I carried because I was I was a naturally skinny kid. I was force fed because I had a grandmother, you know, my mother and my grandmother were in Europe during World War Two. So it was like you clean your plate. It was yeah. like that. So I think I kind of saw food as my own control. It was like my own control issues. And I definitely yeah. struggled, you know, so. I think that um, eventually, like, you just kind of start to be in denial. Like, you have, you see a photograph of yourself and you're like, oh my God, how'd that happen? And I still sometimes look back at old pictures and it's like, I just can't believe it. And it, it doesn't, it, it makes me a little sad because I spent so many years asleep. Yeah. So many years, like, in denial. Um, but now it's like, I'm okay if I have a little bit more around my midsection and this like size four pants is a little tight. Wow. Uh, how great is it that the size four is a little tight? Yeah. You know, like, like, you <laughs> what know, a great like, problem to have. <laughs> it's a great problem to have. Like, I remember when my friends like Joanna, if you gain or lose 10 pounds, everybody's going to see it now. She goes, but before nobody would have noticed. She goes, congratulations, you're home. I loved that. Cause it was like, oh, this is the level of problem I'm at now. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't have noticed 10 pound weight loss on me. Right now. It's like, I got to embrace that. And I'm not in denial. It's not painful to look at my body and go, oh, so what? It's like, I don't care. It's no big deal. It fluctuates like every day, like every mood can be fluctuated, every situation. But like the constant is 
I trust myself now around food. Like I do, I can have like favorite snacks in the house and like, I forget about them or it's not like going to be gone in one night. It's not yeah. like that disordered, like it's kind of amazing, you know? I remember having that first moment when I would leave food in my pantry or my fridge that were tempting before that would have never lasted even a day. And I mean, it's like mind blowing. You're like, how is that happening? I forgot. Like I've had to throw away, it went stale or it went, you know, freezer burn. And I'm like, how is this happening? Yeah, I know. I have this chocolate bar that's lasted for days. Like in the past, I'm, you know, it's just, it's so odd because I was so radically different before. And it is a little like jarring to remember that. Like I said, it's a little jarring, but it's like, I still have to look forward. I have to have that forward thinking, right? Of like, this is where I'm going and that's where I've been, but this is where I'm going and this is who I am now. And I get to like take in all the, like the fruits of whatever that labor, if you want to call that labor, the fruits of my labor, the work that I put in to transforming all those things, like enjoy it, you know? So I don't get too worried about it, but I'm like, it's a nice freedom. Cause then when you're not obsessed with weight and you're not obsessed with like avoiding social situations, like I, I avoided my high school graduation you know, cause it was starting back then I was in boarding school and like, we all kind of like had a monthly stipend to spend money at candy or candy in the shop. And that's, what, so I definitely, by the end of boarding school was starting to get like, you know, chunky and like sugar addiction. And, and I, I remember just so many like things that I missed because of my weight. And it's like, I don't do that anymore. You know, it's like, it's, I get to have a social life, you know? I saw a friend the other day. She saw me when I was my heaviest and she's like, wow, what are you, what are you doing? You look so amazing. You know, she's watched me transform. And I have to remember, like she see, she bought me a present, my going away present, cause I'm moving. And it said made in the West with a little flower Cute. and she bought it and it was a size small and it was loose on me. <laughs> I had to like smile. Like I was like, she, rem- I remember when I was like XL in right. Sprouts. And now she's buying me a t-shirt. It's like a size small. She knows that. And that's just nice. It's like, wow, I've come far, but it isn't just about food. It's about like relationship to yourself, relationship with others. I've gotten just so much, everything, my life out of your program. And I'm so grateful. I'm so oh, grateful. Well, I appreciate that. I think that it will, it is really more about you because the materials are all there. It's just a matter of, do you do you use them, right? Do you really step full foot, full both feet in this process and just sort of surrender to it? And I know that's not an easy thing to do, to just completely trust in yourself. Cause it's not really, I mean, people always tell me like, well, I trust you, Michelle. I trust your program. I just don't trust myself. I'm like, let's, I appreciate that, but it's really not helpful. Like you, the whole point is you need to learn how to trust yourself. Um, that, that if it's feeling right and it, it's resonating and it's aligning, then it's the right step step. It's the right move. Yeah. And I think everybody in life who's ever been screwed over, which is everybody or who's ever made a bad choice or who's ever not listened to their gut instinct and then like yeah. pay the price for it. I think every human being struggles with issues with trust of themselves. I think it's just on a big spectrum and it's for different reasons, Yeah, but, um, it's a journey and I've, I've come so far along that path that I really do at least trust myself certainly around food and many other things that relate to what could be, I guess, extorted as an addiction. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I know yeah. exactly what you're saying. I, it's yeah. that feeling of, I, I know that uh, I I won't, you know, eat 17 pies. It just won't happen. Like it's just, yeah. it's not even possible. I remember um, one of my other clients that you referred to me, she said that to me, she's like, I can't, I physically can't. Like if I want, if I wanted to overeat, I literally can't. And it's like, that happened in like a week. And she was like floored by it. Like, I just can't just shocking. Yeah. It's amazing. Like how you've taken wisdom and knowledge from so many sources and like the brilliance in which these videos were so confounding. It's like, it was like watching my struggles on a screen with a cartoon, like a stick figure, like <laughs> changed my entire life. <laughs> that's you funny. Know? Yeah. It is funny. Like now that I think about it, I'm like, that's really wild. With your <laughs> subpar artistry, no offense, <laughs> but I still yes. got it. Yeah, my drawing skills, not the best. On uh, my computer drawing skills, not the best, I should say. Not the best, but nonetheless, <laughs> like, 
resounding, amazing, profound impact on my life. You know, so many times I think about different videos and like the um, unlocking of the chains that I've been in because they food, I was locked up. I I was out of control. That's why I didn't trust myself. Yeah. And I've known myself to be out of control because diets made me fail over and over. They didn't make me fail. I just couldn't keep up with it or I, I lost the motivation somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. That's so true. And the feeling of out of control, we often feel like the the solution has to be tight control and it's it's just not just it's like we don't control anything, but it's it's really finding a space of calm in that in that understanding. Yeah, the calm and knowing like you've got this. You you're built you're different now. I think one of the things you taught me too is like remember a time when you were really successful. Does that ring a bell? Like, yeah, I've done that with other things. Like, even like if I'm having like a, you know, a friendship that's kind of maybe in a difficult place, like remembering times in that friendship of like how meaningful it is or how, how meaningful it was. And like, you can kind of take that and like knowing that you've had that amazingness, it helps you kind of create the new friendship because nothing is ever constant. Change is right. the only constant. So yeah, just skills for life everywhere. I keep saying that, but I think the more I talk to you, the more I realize like how far reaching it is. Yeah, that's awesome. We should do this more often. We're kind of overdue. <laughs> <laughs> it's been many years. I know. Um, I've, and it's just been really busy personally in my life. That's, yes, that's yeah. why I've, I usually uh, keep in touch with my clients as often as I possibly can, just because I'm always curious about you guys, but yeah. things have gotten a little crazy over here, but um, the, to wrap up, what would be your piece of advice to anybody who's either considering doing the program or just started the program um, just kind of at the beginning of the journey where you were many years ago? I think a hundred percent, if you were lucky enough to have this land in your lap, take that as like a beacon of light. I know there's a big stream of light behind me. Take that <laughs> as like a, a like a gift because I think you, what you do is so the answer to many prayers. It's like the wish that's been granted. So don't be afraid. And there's never a right or wrong. And every kind of what seems like a perceived failure is really just an opportunity for such growth and, and down the line, just liberation, freedom, well-being, and just go for it. You deserve it. And I've learned a lot of self-worthiness thanks to you. And I continue to apply that. And it makes me way more valuable to myself and in my relationships with others. Absolutely. I love yeah. it. I love the advice. Well, thank you so much, Joanna. I thank really you appreciate too. you spending your time. I value your time. And I know this is helpful for people who are at the beginning or considering just to have other people talk about it besides just me talking about it all the time. <laughs> it's, it's interesting as that is. Um, so thank you. Thank you too.